Hello, this is a quick tutorial on how to use uh, dynamic constraints to create terrible, um, terrible spaces in NCloth. Uh, this is for Kodai. He's looking for uh, help on one of his shots in his grad film uh, character. Pull the, the buttons come undone, essentially. So what I did here is I grabbed a simple mesh from the content browser in Maya, dragged it in, human body, and then I created a, a little shirt here by taking uh, parts of his body, using the duplicate, um, the duplicate faces tool, and then using the Z transform to move them off the body. So that's how I created the shirt here. And then in addition to that, I also went down and double click the center line of this shirt, shift right click and did detach components, which uh, basically detached uh, those vertices. So now there is basically a break in the mesh there. Just a moment. So now what we're going to do really quick is we are going to turn this into NCloth. So we'll go up to the FX menu and then to NCloth and then create NCloth right here. Here we go. And you can choose a preset here. So I'm going to choose Silk Replace. Now if we were to run this really quick, it would probably just fall right through the body right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to collect, uh, select the body. Go to end cloth and then create passive collider. So now at this point, we should have the shirt interacting with the body just like so. That looks good. I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to go into the dynamic properties and I'm going to take the rest length scale and decrease that from 1 down to 0.9. And what that means is it's almost going to be like a sweater. It's going to shrink a little bit. And that's just like that. And that's good because we want, we want uh, some tension on the shirt so that when we break the connection, it will kind of pop open. Let's try it. There we go. Okay. So now we need to kind of sew up this front part. So what we can do is just go into the top view here. And then I'm going to go and hit 4 for wireframe, go to vertex, and select all these vertices. These are right here on the edge. I'll go to end constraint and I'll go um, component to component. If you, As you may or may not know, component is a vertice, a face, or an edge. So in this case, it's edges to edges. If I hit component to component, you'll see these little turquoise or whatever seafoam dots here, those are the uh, component to component constraints. So now if I play this, you can see it holds the shirt together and it holds it into shape, which is great. But now how do we break it? Well, all we have to do is go to our dynamic constraint that was created. And we have a few attributes that we can edit here. We have strength, tangent strength, and glue strength. Let us animate the glue strength. So I'll just wait till 20, uh, frame 20 or so. Oh, stop. Runaway simulation. Okay, frame 20. I'm going to keyframe glue strength. And then I'll go to the next. And I'll set the glue strength to 0, like that. Set key. So now if you watch it, then it will go... And it should pop open right here. Pop! There we go. So, if you wanted to just have the top of the shirt, you can obviously just create multiple dynamic constraints with different glue strengths and then you can have it kind of go You can also apply, um, if you set the glue strength low, a certain amount of force on the, on the cloth itself will break the connection. So if you had, potentially, if you had some forces moving the shirt that direction, it would pop open as well. Uh, but there it is, that's, that's it, the basics of it, dynamic constraints, component to component using NCloth. Thank you.